Okay, in this lecture we're going to talk about, it's kind of a random number generator, but we're going to essentially uh, produce an electronic dice, or a die, I guess since there's only one of them. Uh, dice is obviously plural. So, we are going to replicate a die. We're going to be using the, it's made by uh, a VEX, it's the VEX game board uh, counter. Uh, we're going to go through this. This is going to be one of your projects that you're going to be soldering together and then we're going to use it a little bit later on in the semester uh, to, to understand some different things with like a 555 timer and a few of the other logic gates that are on here as well. Okay, so when it's all said and done and you solder everything, your soldering job is going to look just as perfect as it does here in the picture. I'm just kidding, most likely not, but this will be one of our good ones to train on. Okay, we're going to learn about the different parts and pieces on here, all right, and uh, kind of how it comes together as we take a look at it. So we'll be able to, what we essentially do, if you're looking at this game board counter, see there is uh, the, the seven red LEDs. Those are going to represent the sides of a die. So what numbers can we possibly produce? We can produce a one, a two, a three, a four, a five, a six. That's it and they're gonna look just like a die so if you turn a die and you want the six lit up all the two uh, the two columns will be fully lit alright if you want a one it's just gonna be the middle one if you want a four it'll be the four corners okay so on and so forth so there's how we're gonna get a, a die if you want a five it should just be like an X across the middle okay or from diagonal to, di to diagonal, I guess, I'm sorry, not across the middle, but diagonal to diagonal, that produces our five. So just like it would look on a die. All right, so we should be able to hit that button or turn it on in the bottom left-hand corner. So we have an on switch. And then we should be able to hit switch one right there, and it's going to simulate rolling a die for us. So when you hit that, and if you hold it down, it's going to just sit there and keep oscillating through all the numbers. When you let go... All right, that oscillation will slow down and it'll finite in on a number. So that's really what's going on here. But for you guys, it's understanding this piece of the puzzle here. All right, so this is kind of an A to D converter in some aspects uh, as we treat it that way. So we have our analog section here where we are pressing the button. All right, pressing of that button changes our wavelengths and creates a square wavelength for us. Okay. And then every time it's going to pulse, it goes through. So uh, when we hit that button, it's going to create this wavelength that oscillates really fast. So like I said, if you hold it down, all the lights are going to flash and it's going to go through all the different numbers. When you let go, it's going to dampen that wavelength. What dampens it? Using the capacitors. Okay, so that's going to dampen it out and, and in a combination with a 555 timer. All right, so when we go through this, we get our sequential logic and then our combination. So it kind of means some things. All right, sequential means what? We're going in sequence or in order. So what's that really doing? It's going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It's doing it all in binary. Okay, so it's going um, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1. Okay, it's just going back and forth through those because that's 1 through 6, okay, as it's doing that. Then it hits the combination of uh, the combo logic piece, and we'll kind of see where that comes out into the board. So combo logic is where we're going to put it into a bunch of ands and ors and those different kinds of things to get the specific outcome to produce the actual uh, digit 1 through 6 with the lights. All right, so there's kind of our whole combination process as we're going to go through that. So looking back at the board, where do those pieces come into play? All right, so all the combo logic are going to be all the IC chips that we see here. Okay, so the little one, the four pin one, or it's actually eight pin, sorry. Yeah, that's the 555 timer. All right, and then the other ones are a couple different AND gates and OR gates. I think there's an inverter in there as well on the the signal there okay so just take through you are going to start with this bare board alright it's gonna look like this on one side and on the other side you can kinda see through it a little bit the little dark pieces that's where the connections are being made 
all right very important that you solder this stuff in order all right and you follow the directions that it comes with in the box the resistors have to go in a certain spot all right the r1 r2 r3 r4 r5 and r6 and r7 those are all the same size resistors but r8 9 and 10 are a little bit different size the capacitors c1 and c2 those have to go in a certain way they are polarized you're going to have to look for uh, where the negative is on that capacitor. The capacitor C3 is not polarized. It can go in in any direction. However, looking at U1 through U6, okay, you're going to put the chassis in first. Remember, the chassis is something that holds the IC chip so that you can solder without ruining the chip. So you're going to put the chassis in first and solder all those up before you put the chips in. You need to know the chip goes a certain way, and we will cover that in class. Notice on U1 through U6, there's kind of a little block at the bottom of each one of those. All right, a little indicator. That's important because when you put the chip in, there's a little half moon on the chip. It has to align to that little notch that's at the bottom of U1, U2, U3, U4, and U5, and U6. Okay, so we just got to be careful as we're going through on that one. So, resistors R1 through R7, there are 180 ohms. This is really all you're getting in the kit here. So you got the chassis, the IC chips, the resistors, the LEDs, some capacitors, a switch and a push button, and then the battery pack. So as we go on through, so make sure that you know the color code that we went through, the 180 ohm resistors. So you're going to look at the bands and get the 180 ohm resistors, or you can use the multimeter to see if you have the right resistors, okay? Then these resistor or this resistor R8, it's going to be the 1.2K resistor. So you have to match that up with where it goes on the board. All right. So if we take a look at the board, you can find where R8 goes. All right. It's towards the bottom middle part of the board there. All right. R1 through R7 we looked at before. Those are all drop resistors for the LED. All right. R9 is a 10 kilo ohm resistor and R10 is an 18 kilo ohm resistor. Those go right by where our uh, eight, R8, 9, and 10 all kind of go in the same locale, but you have to put the right one in the right spot or your circuit will not work. All right, because remember resistors control current. If you don't put those in the right spot, you might be either sending too much current to something or not enough current to something. So if they're in the wrong location, it will screw up your device. Okay, uh, the capacitors, like I said, C1 is 100 microfarads. Notice it's polarized. It's an electrolytic capacitor, and you can see the negative sign on it. So you have to make sure when you're looking at the board that you put the capacitor in correctly. If you are unsure when you are doing it, call me over and ask me before you permanently solder it so we don't have to desolder and do that sort of thing. All right, capacitor 2 is 0.47 microfarad, and you need to have those in the specific location. Notice this one is polarized as well. It has to go in a certain way. This capacitor C3 is 10,000 picofarad. We don't care which way it goes in. This one is not polarized, so when you use it, just put it in where it's supposed to go. It's over on the left-hand side of the board. The LEDs, those are polarized and you must pay attention to it. All right, look closely at the single LED picture in the bottom right hand corner. All right, notice you can see the long leg and the short leg. And notice there's a lip at the bottom of the LED on the left hand side, but it's flat on the right hand side. That's so if you clip the wires, you still know which side's negative. Negative goes to the short leg, or the flat side of the LED and that holds true for all of those LEDs. If you put the LED in backwards and solder it, it will not work. It's a light emitting diode. The purpose of a diode is to allow current to only go in one direction. So if you put that light in backwards, current will not flow and your light will not come on. So it's very, very important. Once again, if you don't understand, call me over before you solder it in place. The switch, okay, that one's going to pop right in. No polarity on the switch right there. It just allows the circuit to function. Simple push button spring return switch. 
So when you let go of it, it's going to auto return back. Okay. This is a slide switch. This is just our on off switch. So you're either going to be in power or, or have power on or power off. It doesn't matter which way you put that in. It's not polarized. The switch literally just makes a connection. Okay. These are all of our DIP packages here, our dual inline integrated circuits. Okay, so the 8 pin one, like I said before, is the 555 timer. And then the other ones, there are specific chips that go into U1, U6, and U5, all of them, U1 through U6. If you look on top of the chip, so let's look at the 14 pin DIP chip right here. If you look at the very top of that chip, it has a number on it. It's a DM74LS08N. The 08 means something. You have to match that chip up to where it says in the directions whether you're putting it into U1, U2, U3, U4, U5, or U6. If you put that in the wrong spot, it will not work. Also, remember I talked about the notches on the board and the chip has to go in a certain way? Notice there's a circle on this chip. There, there's still the little notch in the middle. You can't quite see it. It's just above that little circle to the left. That has to line up with the notch because those pins mean specific uh, things. So like pin 7 is going to be power, 14 is going to be ground, or vice versa, or those sort of things. Okay. So And then if it's an AND gate, we got the first two pins are inputs, the third pin's an output. So it does really matter where those go. All right. Remember, though, before you put these chips in, you don't ever solder these chips. In the left-hand side, the picture, those are the chassis. You put the chassis in first. You solder the chassis. Do not put any chips in until you have all the chassis in for them. All right. Lastly, the last thing you're going to mount is the battery pack. Um, we'll use some tape underneath to secure it because literally that pack has two wires for power that are going to go into the board. All right. As you solder, as you finish, and as you know that you did it right, and as I check it off, then you can clip your wires and everything is clean. So make sure that we've got good soldering going on here, especially with those IC chassis. Do not put those chips in until you are done soldering everything. Chips go in last. I need to inspect your uh, your board when you're done. So this one's important. Uh, there's some experiments we're going to do with it uh, at the end. You're actually going to do some probability and kind of relate it to math. So anyhow, that's it.